What's up everybody? So today I'm gonna try and clarify whatever it is that I put in the thumbnail about improvising on this instrument. So let's say you're the kind of person that loves this instrument, you love the way it sounds, you love the way it plays, but you can't improvise. Not only can you not improvise, but most importantly, it's not the kind of thing you really want to do. You just want to play some songs that you hear and then that's that's it. You know, you don't have time to really get bogged down with learning the theory and all of that kind of stuff. So what do you play? What do you do? What kind of gigs do you take? All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so number one, when you play this instrument, the general consensus is that you know how to improvise, whether it's jazz or pop or soul, or funk, any of that kind of stuff and you are gonna have to understand some really, really basics to improvisation, but I'm gonna focus on that really just not be in your bag and you just don't wanna do that. So expectation of what you're going to do with this instrument is pretty much gonna dominate what this video is about because when you play this instrument, this is what your audience expects from you. First thing you need to do is take away that expectation that your audience is going to have for you playing this instrument. And it's really easy to do. You do it by putting together a set list where people do not expect you to solo on this instrument or to improvise, I should say. Now, most of the time, believe it or not, most people don't even really know what improvisation is. They don't know if you're making this stuff up or not, or if you've practiced it for years. They do not know and they do not care. The only thing they care about is do you sound good on this instrument? Subverting the expectation of improvising on this instrument is very easy to do because you just quite simply play songs where people do not expect you, nor do they want you to actually just start goofing around on this instrument. So there's a lot of pop songs out there. And if you listen to it, some of them that actually have saxophone, there's no improvised solo. Probably the most popular saxophone solos in pop music, Careless Whisper, it's not a solo. That's just a sax riff. And also Baker Street. Dee da ba doo da dee da These two, uh, there, there's no sax solos in these songs. Just playing those two songs with those sax riffs automatically gets your audience out of the expectation of hearing you improvise. Now they're absolutely gonna wanna hear those riffs. So this brings me to the next point. Generally, when you have a type of improvised solo based set that's an hour long, you're looking to do maybe five, six songs. If you take improvisation out, which eats up a lot of time, now you're looking at having to do somewhere between 10 to 15 songs. So if you're the kind of person that just improvisation isn't really your bag, you're gonna need to learn a bunch of songs. And I'm telling you right now, you're not stuck having to do jazz and funk. There's stuff out there that's just really, really popular that people recognize that they may not even know. Like from the classical world, Claire de Lune, learn that with some tracks, believe me. Nobody is expecting you to improvise on this instrument when you're playing that. Also, box cello suite. Everybody knows that. You play that, and now you seem like, ooh, this person really knows what he's doing. He's playing classical stuff that I think I recognize. Also, holiday music, Christmas, all that kind of stuff. Marches. Man, like, these, this is stuff that people are very familiar with that doesn't draw upon this expectation of improvisation. Let me talk about what you should be thinking about when you play, because realistically, everybody improvises. Nobody's playing something exactly the way it's written or the way they've heard it. Johnny Gill has this song called My, My, My. I think I'm 99% sure that Kenny G is actually soloing and playing soprano sax on it. It's a fantastic recording. Gerald Albright covered this song. Now, listening to the way Kenny G is playing on this song versus the way that Gerald Albright is playing on this song is something that will blow your mind because Kenny G is actually taking more 
of a bebop oriented approach to playing this pop song. Gerald Albright is actually taking more of a smooth jazz, melodic, less improvised interpretation of this song. So, of course, Gerald Albright and Kenny G are improvising on this song, but if you learn it, then you're not thinking about it from an improvised point of view. You're learning it kind of note for note. And I'm telling you right now, if you do the Gerald Albright version of this song, people are kind of going to expect you to play it this way. Also with Georgia on my mind with Gerald Albright, like that's kind of the way everybody, it's the way every saxophone player plays this song now. So, I mean, it's, There's other songs that were popular in the 1980s that people know that just they're beautiful melodies. If by Bread, also Time in a Bottle, that's a fantastic song. Um, a Super Tramp, man, these kind of songs. Uh, what's the other one? The Dire Straits song, it's got the sax riff in it. These songs are just, no one expects you or even really wants you to solo on these songs. One of my favorites is the big man himself. If you check out Jungle Land, I mean, this is the most, I wasn't expecting him to take that direction with a song like that, but it's perfect. It's one of the most perfect rock sax solos ever, man. Check out Jungle Land with um, Clarence Clemens. When you are listening to a singer, you need to not just listen for the melody. It is so much more important for you, if you're not going to improvise, to really catch the subtle details. I wish I could play some of these audio recordings, but my video is going to get flagged. However, when you listen to subtle changes in the timbre, listen to Anita Baker and what she's doing, how much of Sarah Vaughan has actually influenced her in her interpretation of all these melodies that she sings. You listen to somebody like Stevie Wonder, how long he stays in his chest voice. You listen to groups like Guy or The Gap Band with Charlie Wilson, how this person can stretch chest voice when they switch to head voice. Ariana Grande is fantastic. I really like Haley Williams with Paramore, just little subtle things that they do with their voice to change timbre, going into little whispers shouts in certain sections all in one phrase these are the kind of things that you really really need to focus on so let me play a little bit of i'm going to pick uh, three blind mice and then you'll hear how i'm improvising around playing the melody as opposed to having to spend the next 10 15 years learning jazz theory like i get it ultimately i do think that you should start to slowly implement these things in it's going to take you a long time this is not easy stuff but YouTube has a fantastic resource all over the internet, really. So let's get to it. Really taking the time to learn different versions of pop songs is a fantastic way of subverting improvisational expectations. So the Tim Akers, Uptown Funk, that one is probably my favorite of these like jazzed up pop songs because it, it keeps it still funky you know what i'm saying some people take it way too far uh, another one is the dirty loops um they cover the britney spears song circus um jesus molina is probably my favorite youtube piano player right now and he has a fantastic uh reharmonization of katy perry's firework the thing is fan Fantastic. I highly advise you to look that up. But anyway, I'm going to play this Three Blind Mice melody, and then you guys will hear just kind of what I'm doing. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Let me just play around with the melody a bit. Definitely not rocket science, ladies and gentlemen, but imagine taking that 
on a journey in your practice routine every day and seeing where you wind up after a week, after a month. If you have skill in writing, you can write harmony around your mistakes and then you wind up making it sound cool. Now that's your new melody. That's the way you play it and it becomes your signature sound for playing what is a really simple song. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so imagine after a couple of years of doing something like this, you're going to be able to apply these skills to every song you play. Simple stuff. You're going to need to transcribe, but not even the solo. If, if soloing isn't really your bag and you're not going to go in that direction, then you need to transcribe the way people are playing melodies. This is going to be your bread and butter. Obviously, ladies and gentlemen, I have my Altissimo book for tenor and alto. I got a new hat. I like wearing hats. I'm going to figure out what else to do with my fro here. But if you guys like these hats, I'm going to put a link in the description how you can pick that up. I do have an Amazon affiliate link now. Um, I do have some merchandise that's available through Teespring. All of these will be in links in the description below. I got some new stuff on the way. Feel free to browse my store. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. See ya.